Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, as you recall, a couple days ago, I ordered the train for my little Christmas display. It just arrived and I want to set it up. Let's do this. This is going to be fun. Yeah, this is it. It says Bachman Industries from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, actually, they when I bought this thing, they were saying it might be as long as 10 days to get this thing. So I'm glad it, it started showing up really quickly. I ordered it very late last week and uh, it's Monday morning or Monday afternoon and it's here. So let's open this bad boy up and take a look at what we got. All right, yeah, the, the outer package was uh, just kind of a Franken box. It looks like something that they just put together just by, you know, attaching other pieces of boxes. But the inner box is in fantastic shape. It looks like it came in, in uh, you know, without any damage or anything, which is always a good thing. You always got to worry about that with, uh, with delicate things like this. And it came with a cool uh, little... Uh, little brochure that shows some of the different products I get and that's probably a good thing to have because ultimately I am going to extend the range of the tracks and so I'm going to need to get more tracks for that thing for this train and what better place to do it than from the place I bought the train in the first place. All right the unboxing is complete and basically looks like we got everything. This is the uh, power supply that controls the controller, the cable that goes from the power supply to the uh, to the controller itself, which is over here. I got a whole bunch of creep pieces of curved track and a couple straight tracks. And then one of these has a retracker thing on it. So you can kind of roll the car back and forth over here. And if it derails, you can kind of easily get it back on the tracks by itself. It's a kind of a neat little feature. And then of course I got all the little cars. This one doesn't want to lay on its side very well, but uh, they're all pretty cool. They're all pretty realistic looking, a lot of detail on them. So I get to even focus here. There we go. Yeah, kind of a neat looking, uh, looking little train, right? So I'm gonna put this thing together. what's going on here I noticed and I don't even know if you can see it here but where the gap is between the track I noticed in this section here there was more of a gap than I was uh, sort of hoping for and uh, I was hoping that when I pushed this one in here and this one here seemed a bit, that the track was a little bit long I was hoping when I pushed it together here it would just slide through the whole thing and push together and it did so that's the only issue I've seen so far other than the track other than that the track feels nice and smooth all the way around so I think we're ready to do to the next step which is to uh, to hook up the power supply. And uh, I don't know, I may end up going back and forth in terms of whether I have the re-railer track in the front or the, in the back. Uh, I'm, I guess it's gonna all depend on how much wire I have because ultimately the controller, we're gonna wanna have the controller in the front. And so maybe it'll make more sense to have the connection from the controller going to the track real close to each other so yeah maybe I'm gonna flip it around you know this I'm kind of making this up as I go along so I'm gonna rotate this thing around we're gonna put the re-railer in the front and uh, we'll just have to run the wire out to that location and get it into position uh, hiding it somehow and I'm, I'm, I've got ideas on how to do that so I'll show you what that looks like now when I built this table I included a couple of these cable pass-through ports uh, on it there's one here and there's one on the other end they're they're 
perfectly aligned to where the electrical outlets are on the wall underneath it. So what I've done is I've just plugged the power supply into the wall and there, strung the wire up through the wire, up through the hole there. And basically I'm just gonna, I've uh, kind of peeled up the, the felt snow stuff a little bit here. Uh, and we're gonna run the cable underneath that and string it over to the power supply. I think, or the controller. I think I'm gonna put the controller right here with, rel with uh, relation to the track. And that'll be a good, you know, we'll have the cable out of the way. We won't have the track going up over the cable, which can sometimes cause problems. And uh, I think then the next thing we got to do is to put the train on. Now, the plan was all along to hide the wires under the snow. So I always had little plans of poking little holes in the snow at various places to route the wire around. And over time, I don't know, I may get too many holes poked in this thing. We'll have to replace, uh, replace the snow, but I expect it might get a little dirty over time too. So, you know, we'll just play that by year on a year by year basis. But I've got the power, uh, power supply hooked up to the controller now. I've got power on the controller so we know it's working. Next thing I got to do is route up the controller to the track. And I've already rotated the track around so the re-railer is in the front. Now before I route the wire completely that's going to go from the controller to the track, there's one thing I got to watch out for because the thing is designed where if you got a positive voltage on one track and a negative voltage on the other track, uh, the train goes one direction. If it, but if you flip that, the train goes the other direction. I, I think that's because they want it set up so you can go counterclockwise around if you want or clockwise before you, uh, if you want. So um, I've hooked it up one way and they say basically, you know, this wire, you can just pull it out and flip it and it inverts the tracks and makes it go the other way. But uh, before I routed anything in place and got it all under the snow, I wanted to hook it up and see what happened. So I've got it hooked up to the controller. I've got the controller set into the forward motion because I could forward or reverse. So I'm going to put it on. We're going to just slowly wind up the track and let's see which way the train goes. Okay, so the so it's in backwards. If I wanted to if I wanted to go clockwise around the uh, track, that's the way I'd do it. But we're going to go counterclockwise around the track. So we're going to have to rotate the uh, the cable, flip the cable. But like I said, that's a fairly easy thing to do. And it's just part of the feature of this thing. So I'll get to that and then we'll try it again. Okay, so I've reversed the cable, routed it underneath the snow. I actually kind of put a little piece of masking tape on it so I know which side is up so that I can make sure it's done uh, the right way. But we got the thing in forward again. We're going to bring up the speed just a little bit. And now it's going forward. It's going the right direction. So the only thing left to do now is hook up the rest of the cars and see this thing in action. All right, so I got all the cars on the rails properly and all connected together. Time for its maiden run. All aboard. Now, like I said, this is going to be kind of a multi-year project. I ultimately want to extend the track so it runs the whole length of the table here. It goes back, winds in around all these little uh, miniature buildings that I'm going to put up here. So, you know, this is a start and uh, hopefully something we'll be able to add to. One of the things I kind of, I think I mentioned when I bought the train, I decided to go with a not necessarily Christmas themed train, uh, but just something that looks like it could fit into that era. And maybe, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a Christmas train, just a real train coming to a little Christmas village. So the, the beauty of that is it, I can leave it up uh, for more than just the Christmas season. This thing could be, you know, basically up and as long as I want to have it up. So uh, I'm happy with the start. It's a good first start. And like I said, got to get some more track now and get the rest of the little village going. But uh, I think we got a good start here. So I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.
All right, a couple days have passed by now since I installed this thing, and if, and today the first video of the building of the table went live, and somebody commented that I could maybe find some little village elements if I went out to Coles. They said that Coles has a good good selection of like little Christmas village items you could buy. So I figured, you know what? I didn't think of that, and I bet you Coles might have something. And so I went out there and. Uh, found what they were, what the people were talking about, and I decided against it because the scaling was way off. I'm gonna deal with the fact that, you know, the scaling may not be exactly perfect with some of the buildings I put in here, but I didn't want a building that eclipsed the size of the train that's, you know, five, six, seven times uh, the scaling of the train, you know, and have the big giant building that's a two-story building towering over this little train. So I uh, decided against that, but Decided to hit a couple other places uh, while I was at the Coles. There's a couple other things. There's like a Bed Bath and Beyond and stuff over there. And I actually found these cute little Christmas trees. They were actually really inexpensive. The big ones there in the back were uh, $5 for a package. And then these uh, came uh, four to a package for $5. And because it was the day before Thanksgiving, uh, what they actually did is they had a 25% off sale. So. I got $15 worth of these little miniature trees uh, to go around the train. I figured, you know, when I get some more village elements in here and stuff like that, then they can uh, then they can be like in front of the individual houses or stuff like that. And I thought these kind of added to it. But right now, you know, while we're building our little community here, uh, it's just going to be a little forest of Christmas trees. And I thought they'd look really good with a with the uh, with the train going around. Now, you might say the scaling's a little bit off on that too. But it'd be off if these Christmas trees were like house Christmas trees. I'm thinking these are more like Christmas trees that might be in a community. And at that, at that scale, you know, the, uh, the size of the train and the size of the trees are 100% normal. So, uh, like I said, wanted to show you that. This is going to be something that just kind of gradually grows over the next few months and years. And uh, we'll just see what we turn it into.